All right, so now we're gonna begin adding some shadows, some tones. But before I do that, um, I just wanna mention that I've balanced out all the individual flat colors to make them look a little more appealing, just to how I like it. I've switched her hair to, um, to brown because I felt like there was a lot of blue going on. And then I lightened up the jacket a little bit and darkened up the pants to have a little more contrast. So now we're gonna add some shadows. And if you remember in the beginning, we created kind of a rough sketch with a rough lighting scheme. We can reuse these shadows and overlay them directly over our finished drawing, but I'm going to repaint them in. Uh, but if you wanted to reuse them, I would take my rough draft and put them in a folder. Let's just organize it. Matter of fact, let's put the new drawing in a folder as well. So everything goes into a folder. Let's label them rough thumb final. And we'll just and we'll just duplicate the rough thumbnail version and place it above the final. And then we can enlarge it by transforming it with control or command T. And before I would try to line it up as best as I could like this. But a good way to, to try to match it up is have the topmost line for the drawing line up. You can't always rely on the transform line because sometimes there might be like artifacts or debris, little things that you draw above your character, and then that line will change. This line represents the topmost pixel that's on the on that layer. And then you want to line the bottom the same way. And as you can see, the transform line doesn't line up exactly with the shoe, so it's gonna be slightly below the shoe. So you have to get it, you're gonna have to eyeball it to line it up. Once once you have it kind of approximately lined up. You want to hold shift and then slide it over and that should be pretty good so then just holding on shift lining it up you shrink it a little bit more and there you go all right so for the technique that we're going to use to create our shadows is we're going to multiply we're going to change our layer setting to multiply for the shadows for these shadows one thing to note if i set this layer to multiply nothing happens because it's in the folder so i'll set it back to normal it has to be outside of the folder for it to work or you can set the, the folder to multiply and then it'll it'll bleed through but this treats everything within that folder as a multiply layer so how we're going to do is we're going to turn the multiply off we're going to move this layer outside of the folder and then we're going to set that layer to multiply and so this is how we are going to paint in our shadows so what multiply does it it basically bleeds through and doubles up the colors with the color you have with and, and the color underneath um, automatically creating a shadow. It's going to be a slightly darker and cooler version of whatever color you already have laid down. But notice the pixels are really blurry because when we ex enlarge pixels, it has to compensate for the larger scale by creating new pixels for the higher resolution and it'll get blurry. So if I were to paint in some new shadows, you see how hard edge and sharp that is versus that. So we're going to redo it. We'll have the little one turned on as reference on the top. All right, let's turn it off and let's just create some new shadows. So I'm going to create another layer above the folder and then we're going to use the clip mask tool and we're going to clip this layer down to the, to the folder underneath it by clicking this button here and you'll see a little red line that's going to represent the clipped layer. And what that means is whatever we paint, it will not go beyond the pixels underneath or the border of, of each layer. It'll stay within all the boundaries. And it is actually painting outside, it's just not visible. So if I turned off the clip mask, you see how it stays within that boundary. So it's really useful for things like shadows and other layers, layer effects, where you only want it to affect specific parts of your drawing. In this case, everything that's in the folder, it'll touch. So let's begin painting in our shadows. I'm gonna pick this blue color from our rough draft and set this to multiply. So one thing to note with multiply is the color that you are using is actually not the color that you see. So you see this, this purple is different from the blue on her neck. It's because it's been multiplied. And if we wanted to get that color back, say we left that color, we selected a different color and we wanted to come back to it. When we select this color, the color on her neck, we think that, oh, that's the blue color that we want. If I were to paint that over the skin again, it'll be a different color. Because again, it doesn't represent the color that you're actually using. So when we turn off multiply, then we can see the actual color. This is the color we want to use. And we turn off multiply again. So that's one way to retrieve your color. Another way is just to save the color swatch. So go to your color swatches here, and then just hit this little water droplet here, and you'll get it. Sometimes if, the, if it's lined up up here, it'll create new colors depending on where this red square is. 
if you click on the last color swatch and then create it, it'll create it just one before. So it kind of get a little tricky. So in order to have it show up at the end every time, you would delete with this trash can here every time until the red square disappears. Once it's gone, then you can create it. New ones. Or you can just create it anywhere and then hold on to command or control and that's gonna allow you to shift it around wherever you want. It can be a little tricky to maneuver with a small little swatches like this. So you can just pull it out like this and enlarge it. A good thing to do first is actually you can create uh, a new set of swatches and I've created one called Jetty and it's just a bunch of blank ones. This way you don't change the original, the original default colors. So this will give you a set of your own colors. If you're reusing the same colors, say if you're doing like graphic um, art and you're, you have a long production line and you want to make sure you have everything consistent, then you would save the, the color swatches. Another way to get the color that you want is to click here and then look at the coordinates of the numbers. But that's just really slow and redundant. The way I tend to get my colors back is to go through color history. This is where it's really useful. You don't really need to save your colors. You just have them on hand and it's like one of the most recent colors you use. So if I'm using pink, it'll remember that's pink. If I'm using brown, it'll just sift through whatever color that I'm using last. But probably my favorite and most efficient way to get the color is using your eyedropper tool, but your second eyedropper, which is a pickup color from the layer. So it, it knows what's on the layer and it only picks up that color that's on the layer. So if I have pickup color from layer selected and select this area, I'll get that color. If I go off of this color, notice how it goes to transparent. It switches from color to transparent because on that layer, we only have shadow, shadow and transparency, nothing on it over here. So if you're confused why it's picking up transparency, it's because you're picking up from the layer and not from the colors that you're seeing. So those are the ways you would uh, retrieve your colors. All right, let's start adding some shadows now. So the brush that I'm going to be using is the Turnip Pen. It's one of the stock brushes that comes with Clip Studio. And since this is a more graphic approach, we can use the pens, to create these nice sharp edged shadows. And the things that I'm looking for when I'm creating these shadows are pockets and also how planes turn or how forms turn. Wherever I put a shadow, it's going to create um, a ripple, a divot, a crease, a wrinkle, or a cast shadow. So cast shadows are areas where objects, objects are casting a shadow. So right here, the head is blocking the light. And that's going to also imply which direction the light's coming from. So we're coming from kind of the top left area. So I'm just going to go through the picture, kind of go quickly, large, broad strokes, and then we can go in and modify it and edit and clean up areas later on. But we want to try to get the larger shapes out of the way first. So generally I'm looking for pockets like this area here, areas that would be away from the light and depends on your style. You can decide how much shadows being put in, how much light there is. If you want to simplify things, you can just put them all in shadow. If you want to make them a little bit more detailed, you can spend a little bit more time rendering them out, getting all the forms nice and right. So it depends on how far you want to take it. Since I am going more of a graphic approach, I want to try to keep these shadows a little bit simplified. And this technique is a great place to start when, when first learning how to draw digitally. It may be basic, but it's still techniques, the exact same techniques and processes that I use even today in, in more difficult or advanced drawings. The same exact techniques apply. Matter of fact, practicing this technique um, more often from time to time is helpful because um, it trains your brain to think more graphically and you're designing these shadow shapes as opposed to just painting without, um, without the sense of design in mind. This is actually how I first started painting digitally. The more I improved, the more I learned, the more I play with different approaches and techniques. This is also a great way to train your mind in, in seeing things in a, a three-dimensional mindset as well. Thinking about how planes turn, things how, how objects round off, shrinking to a smaller brush, more finer areas. So as I'm painting this, I'm also erasing out areas by using the transparency mode of that same brush by pressing C 
it'll switch your brush to transparency as we talked about before on an earlier video so if you're a little confused make sure to watch the previous videos that would lead up to this and get you up to date all right so we've got her shadows for the most part let's add some shadows for doggo sometimes you can use shadows to push objects back like this area for the leg here and the, the lit area brings the other leg forward other times you can use the shadows to represent that turn in form rounding off objects areas that cast shadow dog looking sad sad dog this is the, the shape of his his eyebrows the dog brows little shadows here and there for the leaves i think that does it for our shadows for our characters now we're going to add some shadows for the grounding just like the leaf when we added a shadow right on the dog's head the shadows will help to ground your character two objects and they feel like they're not just floating. They feel like they're, they're on some sort of platform, some sort of surface. So this leaf right now feels like it's just, it's just floating around. But if we add a little bit of shadow, we know that the leaf is kind of touching the floor. So these ones, I can do that. And I can do one over here too. And I feel like it's on the ground, something like somewhere. It's, that's weird because that would mean that's a really big leaf off in the distance. So we can have that one floating. As a matter of fact, we'll have both of them floating. I feel like, yeah, I feel like those can be floating. Let's get some design here for the shadow so it goes at an angle not just like horizontal it's looking nice i got this area a little bit more now we don't want to overdo these shadows so i think i think that's a pretty good spot to stop at okay and that's pretty much it so at this stage you can call it done if if you feel like this is a stage you want to stop at that's perfectly fine um, but I'm going to show you a few little rendering techniques to beef up your drawing a little bit. So we'll pause here for now, but we'll pick it back up in another video. Until then, you can follow me on all the socials at The Jetty Jet Show. Thanks for watching. Keep on drawing. Take care. Peace.